The failure mode and effects analysis provides a proactive method that allows us to evaluate both the design and the process to learn more about when, where, and how the failure may occur. Also, it shows us the failure impact on different parts of the process through prioritizing the risks using three main value, risk severity, its occurrence, and the ability to detect it. The failure mode and effects analysis include four types. Design failure mode and effects analysis explores the product malfunctions that is related to the materials, form, interface. Process failure mode and effects analysis explores the faults that related to the production process. Functional failure mode and effects analysis explores the faults in the how the system functions. Service failure mode and effects analysis involves the product service design. Applying the failure mode and effects analysis. Define the product that will be analyzed and its function in order to focus the investigation. For example, car seat belt. 2. Define the first potential failure that may occur as. Each potential failure should be listed individually to avoid distraction. In this example, it is hard to release in time for emergencies that require leaving the car immediately such as drowning or fire. Step 3. The severity level. Determine the fault's level of severity from 1 to 10. We will set it to 10. Then, add the potential cause or causes for the failure. For example, the design of the seatbelt lock, the functionality of the lock and how easy to open it when the user intends to do that. Step 5. The probability factor. Add the probability factor which represents how many times this failure is likely to happen. In this example we will set it to 3. In the step number 6. Identify the current procedures that the system is using to prevent such failures from happening such as testing, monitoring, or applying error prevention mechanisms. For example, the current lock is designed to easy release, its red color allows the user to easily identify it. Step 7. Determine the detection value for the fault. It represents the likelihood to detect the failure using the current control methods. In this example we will set it to 7. Step 8. Risk priority number. Define the risk priority number, RPN, for failure. The RPN is an equation that includes multiplying the above three factors to prioritize the faults to side and understand the importance to solve it. The RPN equation is Risk priority number, RPN equals severity x occurrence x detection. In this example, RPN equals 10 by 3 by 7 equals 210. Step 9. Determine the recommended actions that can be applied to prevent this failure in the future. This may involve changing the current controls or improving it to make sure that the detected failure will not occur again in the future. Step 10. Assign the responsibility of applying the recommended procedures to a person in order to build an action plan to apply these recommendations.